Hi, good evening. I am Bhuvan Apoor Vidha. This is Study IQIS English, and uh, you are going to be attending lecture two of Aranya series, where we discuss the whole syllabus of environment, forest, climate change, environment, ecology, all of that. The whole syllabus for prelims and mains. All right. Uh, prior to this, if you haven't seen this already, go ahead and look at lecture one, where I have discussed the whole introduction. the uh, macro overview of how we intend to use this series all right and only then begin watch uh, begin to watch this series Be uh, begin to watch lecture 2 onwards all right okay so we'll jump into it <clears throat> because again there is no point uh, uh, wasting time we have a lot of important concepts uh, to consider and at the same time we'll be looking at previous years questions also to understand exactly what you should be uh, seeking to grasp out of the various concepts that we will be discussing all right good evening to all of you welcome guys welcome all right let's get started now so first what we are going to do is take a look at the basic concepts thereafter we'll discuss ecology and more specifically we'll take a look at say the organization of ecology okay we'll seek to understand say how an ecosystem functions not just say in the transfer of energy but also transfer of matter okay we'll seek to understand trophic level trophic levels also trophic levels will be the uh, pause point where we will close the class for today and then uh, in these concepts you will also see all these previous years questions that upsc has asked just from this very uh, starting uh, basic concepts okay all right karuna good evening all right so let's get to it again uh, like we do in the morning class i am going to be giving you questions i hope that you take some time out to answer them all right and those who answer correctly again i'm going to be doing the same thing that i do in the morning class i'll be featuring those individuals who take the effort to understand go through the class and uh, answer the questions that follow all right good evening pratik arka bulbul deepak thanks for joining guys okay let's get started now we have a lot of learning to do today so uh, this is my uh, telegram channel if you haven't joined it so far will i would suggest you go ahead and join it this is my email id for uh, the mains questions that i give you you will shoot your answers here and this is my telegram channel if you face any immediate doubt any strategy related guidance that you require reach out to me i am available for you all right okay let's get started so first we will seek to understand what is environment okay let's start from the basics shuruaat se shuruaat karte hain okay so now an environment is primarily characterized by two things one biotic factors two abiotic factors okay first look let's understand what is it it's the natural component where you have biotic and abiotic factors now the name gives it away biotic has the word bio which means it has something to do with life okay lekam suresh good evening guys and abiotic as the name suggest has to do with the absence of life all right so now straight away understand how do you how do you say different remember the differences environment if you were to say understand it from the economics point of view you know how the government goes ahead and say creates the particular uh, uh, stakeholders all of them are present there are various considerations that are there before a policy is formed if there was a rough simile that i could draw for you it's that you know it's the larger framework within which everything operates okay now straight away we will realize that the environment determines the habitat the ecosystem and the ecological community okay that the relationship is unidirectional by the way okay that the environment that the mix of biotic and abiotic factors will determine the habitat of the particular organism now you will understand habitat in the next slide but this is one fact that you will have to understand just by simply understanding that the presence of life is codependent on two things it's dependent on number 1 you okay the biotic individual and number 2 the abiotic factors say sunlight say temperature rainfall all of these are abiotic factor, factors the non living factors so the presence of life essentially is a mix of both of these abiotic and biotic which is why habitat is straight away determined by the environment the particular organism lives in all right ठीक है प्रतीक मैं देखता हूँ मैं देखा नहीं एक्चुअली सुरेश गुड इवनिंग स्नेहा गुड इवनिंग ऑल राइट नो लेट्स गो एट अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट आर ए बायोटिक फैक्टर्स द बेसिक्स गाइस बिकॉज यू विल सी यूपीएससी हैज गॉन हेड एंड आस्क दीज क्वेश्चंस ओके 
So now the abiotic factors, the absence of life, the lifeless factors. Okay. So you can think of all the kind of ecosystems that you can think of, say right from say a uh, mangrove ecosystem, okay, or a desert ecosystem, a forest ecosystem. Now you will understand what ecosystems are also, but you know that these exist, you know these names exist. All of these have say individual characteristics, say you in mangroves you find brackish water, okay. In a forest ecosystem you might find fresh water, all right. You might also find that fresh uh, forests exist where there is saline ingress happening. Different sorts of forests exist. Okay? So all of these are what? The abiotic factors that are determining the growth of life around them. Okay? Ocean currents, wind, temperature, altitude, all the non-living aspects that will determine the creation of life are abiotic factors. Similarly, you have the biotic factors now. So what, what exactly is needed for life to sustain? Accept all of these things. All right. So first, first understand number one that you have say plants, animals, and other organisms. All of them have individual processes that they go through. Right. So you know that plants do carbon fixation, that they fix carbon from the atmosphere and make it for use for themselves and for us. Right. So again, there is a different process happening within the plant, within the animal also that you are able to say. Uh, breathe, you know, convert say uh, uh, oxygen into carbon dioxide. That the same carbon dioxide is now taken by the tree and now converted into oxygen. So these internal processes are also happening. So from a strictly biological perspective, three processes take place in an environment. Okay, number one, the physical process, the existence of that particular organism. Okay, number two, the biological process the internal processes that are happening within it and number three the chemical processes such as say carbon fixation happening, nitrogen fixation happening, right? All of these are what? The components that are within a particular environment, okay? So straight away the basics, you know what hydrosphere is, okay? What uh, lithosphere is, straight away understand that two primary types emerge. One is the land-based or the terrestrial and next you have the aquatic, okay? The two primary sorts of classifications that you can draw out of it and wherever life exists, that becomes biosphere, okay? We'll understand that also in the next slide, okay? So the basics first, what is environment? What is the creation of life dependent on both biotic and abiotic factors, okay? Let's go forward now. Let's look at habitat. So I told you that the environment will determine the habitat. It's a unidirectional relationship that environment and habitat share. Now, what is the habitat? The exact address of a particular organism. Where is the physical address? So, for example, on your palm, a certain sort of bacteria might be present. So, its habitat is your palm. You find, say, the Royal Bengal Tiger in Sundarbans. So, the habitat of the Royal Bengal Tiger is Sundarbans. The physical address is the habitat. Clear? Now, the main components of a habitat, what else is required? You know, the address ab hai, usko kya hai? requirements kya kya hai? Number one, shelter. Number two, water, food and space. It requires the basic roti kapda makan for its sustenance, for the life to be created and sustain itself. Why is space required? You can understand why say shelter, water and food might be required. Why do you think space is required? Because again, the process of procreation or reproduction, right? Say for example, you know that tigers are animals that have range. You know, they operate within a particular area. That's why it's called the king, no? Whatever it's in its domain. I'm the monarch of all I survey. My right, there is none to dispute. That's like the tiger speaking, right? So you know that it requires a particular space. Only in that space can it operate efficiently have the say ability to go ahead and mate with a female tiger, right? That is required. Unless you have space, then you are not looking at the survival ability of life in the long run, okay? So space is important, why? Because it allows the process of procreation or reproduction, right? Now, for an animal, it needs to find and gather food, all right? Select a mate, 
because eventually the creation of life is about sustenance of life the next generation the progeny should come okay which is why all of these things exist okay and successfully going ahead and getting the next batch out now for a plant a good habitat must provide the combination of light air water and soil exactly what it needs to go ahead sustain life create life procreate clear now the environment determines the habitat and not vice versa straight away only because environment has both abiotic and biotic which will determine the creation of life then the life will decide where to live the address okay simple concepts you don't even need to remember this okay let's go forward now let's have a look okay now let's look at ecosystem so what exactly is ecosystem for example we must have discussed in our morning classes that there needs to be a creation of say example for example if i say that there needs to be a creation of an ecosystem for online gaming in the country remember we say this in our classes what would that mean obviously i'm drawing a rough comparison but what 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 does that mean that means that there are certain stakeholders in it economics ke point of view se samajhna hai samajh lo environment that an ecosystem has certain stakeholders all right say a b c and they have a particular relationship between them all right and all of them are working towards a common goal is that not ecosystem that there are certain stakeholders there is a relationship between them that exists and they have a common goal that's exactly what ecosystem in nature is also that you have the three stakeholders the producer the consumer the decomposer the one that produces food the troughs basically okay now if it produces its own food it becomes an autotroph okay you know first example that will come to your mind is plants plants are autotroph correct what are the other autotrophs can you think of say some other uh, living organisms that could be considered to be autotrophs now that's what upsc will ask you upsc is not going to ask you what are autotrophs everyone knows okay even the casual attempter will know you are specialized guys what is different about you so autotrophs are not just plants again all right you have certain algae and bacteria that are able to source their own food all right this is what you are going to know differently that autotrophs are not just plants that is the basic level understanding okay specialized understanding is that there are certain sets of bacteria plus algae who are able to create their own food hence forth hence which is why they are called autotrophs all right now let's look at the notes that i have for you i'm going to share this by the way on my telegram channel so have a look okay it will solidify your understanding you don't need to it's for quick revision purpose obviously nothing substitutes reading a book if you were to consider going ahead and getting a book all of this notes plus the recent interpretations are are most uh, well shared in the study iq book so i would go ahead and uh, recommend it for you also theek hai cyanobacteria correct theek hai now a functional unit of nature where living organisms interact amongst themselves and with the surrounding abiotic factors right so you have say producers consumers decomposers all of them interacting within themselves plus you have sunlight and rain and salinity and all of the other non living factors okay how are they going ahead and forming a relationship with the non, uh, abiotic factors also that's exactly ecosystem so now an ecosystem is area dependent number two learning for you okay it's an always an area dependent conversation you define as the researcher what's the area of your research when you are looking for ecosystem for example the simplest example that i gave you that if you decide that this is my palm all right if this is your palm and if i just want to go ahead and see the ecosystem of this particular area right you will find that they it will have exact all of these stakeholders there that there will be a certain set of bacteria there living probably harmful probably beneficial again research ke baad pata chalega but then these will be present if you want to study the ecosystem of mangroves you will find the same same relationship the same stakeholders there they will have a relationship all right and survival will be the end goal because the the whole point of life is survival all right that the survival of the fittest when we talk about it is the other concept the next stage first is survival 
just the creation of life. Life wants to create and survive. That's what it does through all of these concepts. Okay. Now, in, in an ecosystem, you find both biotic and abiotic, obviously. These are the biotic ones. The abiotic are the sunlight, rainfall, rainfall soil chemistry, okay, salinity, wind, altitude, whatever the non-living constraints that you can think of are abiotic factors. All right. And now every factor in an ecosystem depends on every other factor, either directly or indirectly. You see, all of these, the producer, the consumer, the decomposer, don't they share a relationship? Don't they share a direct relationship? And we will understand that relationship is in two counts, by the way. Okay. If you were to just look at this, the producer, the consumer and the decomposer, all right, what you find is the relationship is on two counts. Number one, the relationship is of energy transfer. We'll discuss how the energy transfer also happens in the most simplest manner. All right. And the other is of transfer of matter. This is what the what's happening here eventually. All right. Through whatever science, whatever biology is at work, eventually the end goal is these two things. Number one, that they are transferring energy amongst themselves and that there is a transfer of matter also happening. In fact, a cycling of matter is happening. A cycling of energy is also happening. You know uh, that energy is never, say, uh, created or dissipated. It just transfers form. Exactly that's what's happening here also. It's just transferring. It's metamorphosing into different, different forms, yet it continues on. All right. So we'll take a look at this. Let's go forward and let's look at ecology now. Ecology is essentially whatever I told you, the science of that. You know, you're just studying how these living things, all these, uh, say, autotrophs, heterotrophs, all these plants and animals, all of them together. How do they coexist? All right. And at the same time, how do they live together with the abiotic factors? This is the whole science of it. The study of, say, ecosystem, you know, or a group of ecosystems together is ecology. You're looking at that interrelationship between, say, different uh, stakeholders. Ecosystem is, always has stakeholders. So, there's different stakeholders, whatever is the science that is happening between them or amongst them. All right. So, this is what an ecologist studies. Very, very commonly asked question, Ernest Heckel, I think a German uh, person. All right. So, we'll take a look at this now. Let's go forward and understand the detail of it. Okay. Now, ecological organization. So, for example, like I told you, ecosystem is always what? Remember the first thing that I told you. Ecosystem is always a functional unit of an area. Yes, an area is first defined. Then you go ahead and say, okay, I want to determine the ecosystem of this area. So, for example, right now, what we are going to do is take an example of an area around a lake. Okay, a water glaze in a forest. Say you have gone to Jaldapada National Park, West Bengal, Wildlife Sanctuary. You have gone there. Okay. So you go there and you find this glaze, this water body right in the front. Now we'll take that example and understand what exactly is organization in an ecology, ecological organization. So for example, you have one particular tiger that comes and drinks water there. Okay. So this guy, this lone tiger who comes and drinks water there, this guy becomes my individual all right. He becomes my individual or my organism. Right. Now he has suppose brothers, brothers, brothers and sister tigers. Now they come visiting this particular tiger, Pir Khan. Right. Now what happens? The number of tigers along with him, his brothers and sisters that have all come together, that becomes a tiger population. So what does that tell you? Similar species, a number of similar species is population. Now, similarly, around this water body, this tiger has come to drink water. Later, you find that a, a deer also comes, an elephant also comes, a group of herd of elephants come there. So, all of these different, different species that are coexisting within that ecosystem, within that particular area that you and I have defined, okay? That becomes a community. See, that's how it's amongst us, no? We all have different characteristics. Yes? You with your family is a part of a population. You and I together in a society are a part of a community. Yes? So, you see, this is how it progresses forward now. 
what could be the next uh, uh, level here can someone tell me because this is the question that i have for you from say individual up until say a uh, biosphere how do you go ahead what's the linkage bataiye what are, what comes after the community can someone tell me has anyone gone through the ncrts so far i would have expected you guys to go through ncrts i had done a, done a strategy video where i asked you to go through ncrts if you haven't please consider okay these are the bare basics you ought to know this or else you are not going to be solving uh, upsc questions efficiently and if you are ignoring this you are ignoring at your own peril all right okay so you have community and then you go forward and you create say, the larger larger segments now okay the larger ones come up so you have ecosystem that comes up okay then that becomes the bigger one is a biome and then finally the biggest one is the biosphere now how are you going to understand them individually okay we developed we discussed what ecosystem is so you have all of these members of the community together their relationship amongst themselves plus how they get affected by the abiotic factors that exactly is ecosystem okay thereafter you have biomes which is essentially a classification of say you have terrestrial biomes let's look at this figure that that's easier for you look at this figure for biomes okay so you have different tropical forest boreal forest savanna tundra all of these are based on what what are these based on are they based on the latitude or the longitude batao this is what upsc will ask you whether biomes are decided by latitude or longitude ocean currents huh which of the following affect biomes or determine biomes let me know in the answer see this is this is what the uh, upsc is going to ask you this is how you are going to correlate every map that you look at you should straight away ask yourself questions what are the questions that i can from uh, frame out of it okay so let me know if if these are the different biomes say if you have a desert here okay and if you have a desert here say you have a desert here boa vista desert okay do you think that they will be having the similar characteristics does that happen correct suresh you are absolutely correct bang on do you think tell me two two particular deserts in two particular continents do you think that they will have exactly similar conditions not at all not at all it will be in fact in, uh, inherently different why because the abiotic factors will be different the biotic factors obviously will be different so what does that tell you that biomes okay throughout the whole globe or throughout the whole world are different in spite of categorization similarly of being categorized similarly okay okay how are they different they are different in terms of the species what kind of species are there what kind of plant outgrowth is there do you realize all of these individually affect because again what do they become they are the abiotic factors so they will determine what kind of life is getting created samajh rahe ho no two biomes are alike and plus similar biomes also have differing characteristics two learnings for you in two lines i'm telling you clear let's go back now so the differences again this is a screenshot i've taken from the study iq book so this difference is straight away environment the surroundings where an organism lives comprises of the physical component can be micro or macro okay simple ecology i've told you the study of these interactions between the different stakeholders and ecosystem is all of these interrelationships plus abiotic factors is that absolutely clear guys okay ecosystems are only of two types terrestrial and aquatic all right simple two lines i have told you if you have any doubts right now let me know or else we'll go on to the next slide we'll take a look at few questions now time for few questions theek hai ab chalo ab sawal dekhte hai thoda okay let's do limiting factors jaldi se all right limiting factors as the name suggests no these are constraints on the population of a species 
okay they limit a particular population so it must you must think at times if you don't think right now so you must know that particular species or say particular organisms right they multiply at a very high level so for example rabbits okay so a rabbit can give birth up to 7 times a year do you realize their gestation period is very small so why is it that we don't have rabbits all over the world you know if your if your reproduction cycle is that fast your number should also be that much it should show in the whole world why is it that you don't find rabbits that frequently because every species has a particular limiting factor to it that basically inhibits the growth the un, unregulated growth of its population that's how say nature regulates that all population remains say at a particular desired level you know if there is no anthropological intervention from uni you will see nature does this itself so for example i'll tell you i was reading an example of a particular bird in northern ireland i'll i'll share the name in my telegram group okay so this bird in northern ireland has a predator okay and this predator goes ahead and eats this bird once every 4 years only okay it's a quadrennial uh, murder that it does why because once the population of this say becomes 1000 this is little fat and lazy so it becomes easier for it to catch and then once it starts eating it becomes healthier healthier and it goes and you know as a substantial meal a feast after that so you see, you see how nature limits populations yes so any such factor that is a constraint on the growth of population of a particular species is a limiting factor right so let's look at now why do seeds not germinate quickly in rain forests for example again rain forests you and i know are areas of rich diversity that we know no but then you will often find that if you have to go ahead and plant a seed there it's not going to germinate very quickly in fact it will struggle to germinate why is that because of excessive rainfall you know that uh, uh, tropical rain forests receive extensive rainfall continuous hours of shower is observed so what happens because of that continuous shower you have all of these the soil the top soil gets washed away so the all the nutrient rich soil is lost Do you realize? So even tropical rainforests have limiting factors. What does the limiting factor become in this case? The soil chemistry. That the lack of nutrients in the soil becomes a limiting factor for the growth of plants. Similarly, in tropical areas also, you find dense canopy. You know, trees with massive shade. So all of this undergrowth here. How are they going to grow, poor fellows? so again the lack of sunlight becomes a limiting factor it is stopping the growth of a particular population of a particular species okay that is limiting factor so you can straight away now just start counting in your head what could be the limiting factors for say any species you pick say pick for humans only what could be the limiting factors for our survival think of it number 1 extreme heat number 2 extreme cold rainfall excessive snowfall any sort of water based uh, uh, disaster that you have from floods to tsunami natural processes i'm talking about don't uh, you, you it wouldn't include say covid 19 okay because again covid 19 is is a man made uh, pathogen you are looking at natural uh, processes that would go ahead and limit a particular population clear so these are limiting factors now so go ahead answer these questions now uh, like i told you this is question a by the way and this is b this has been asked from uh, 2015 i believe or 2014 okay and this is from 12 again we'll just learn through questions only you now know what ecosystem is with, with what ecology is what environment is okay what limiting factors are what abiotic and biotic is let's look at this question now which one of the following is the best description of the term ecosystem option 1 a community of organisms interacting with one another option 2 that part of the earth which is inhabited by living organisms option c a community of organisms together with the environment in which they live option d the flora and fauna of a geographical area see how easy the answer becomes now all you need to do is understand that ecosystems have a relationship between the stakeholders plus the abiotic factors so the answer becomes but obvious 
Clear? You will answer these by the way. Um, uh, leave all these answers in the comment box. We are doing from questions A to I think uh, I. So leave all of them. The correct ones I'll feature in the next class. Theek hai? Question B. If a tropical rainforest is removed, it does not regenerate quickly as compared to a tropical deciduous forest. Why does that happen? Why does that happen guys? The soil of the rainforest is deficient in nutrients. Propagules of the trees in the rainforest have poor viability. Okay. See how easy the options become now. Just because you have gone through the basics. Okay. Priya, uh, Priya, Suresh and Pratik, have a relook. Have a relook at uh, question A. Okay. Question A ka ek relook kari aap log. I think uh, Karuna has got this correct. Lekam has got this correct. But anyways guys, leave the answers for me in the comment box. It will be easier for me to uh, go ahead and, and, and tabulate it. Okay. This answer bhi aap mujhe batayenge. We discussed this right now only. Next, we'll take a look at niche. Yes. So, for example, you must have heard of this, no? That uh, A.R. Rahman's niche is singing at high tones. Huh? What does niche mean? Niche means your particular address plus the role that you do. You know, your importance is niche. So, for example, my niche would be to say, communicate not so very complex ideas in a manner in which my students can understand. Obviously, complex ideas, we do it in the morning. Okay. So that is niche. The kind of role that you have, the kind of importance that you have within an ecosystem. Okay. So the knowledge of niche requirements helps in its conservation. Straight away, if you were to go ahead and say, go ahead and draft a project for say the Royal Bengal Tiger. So unless you do not know about the role that it plays, say as an apex predator, we'll discuss what apex predator means. Okay. If you do not know its role about the apex predator. Are you going to draft a good conservation policy? No, it will be absolutely nonsense. Right. So niche is that particular role that it has, you know, that unique importance that it has. All right. So no two species within the same habitat can have the same niche. Please understand this also. So for example, in a particular lake. Okay. So you have say two particular forms of birds. And they have say a particular fish that they like. Suppose this is the fish. Okay. What you are going to find is that because there is a competition here for a particular prey, eventually it is going to be one of them who will survive in that particular pond. Why is that? Because ye apna importance bana raha hai. That is the role I play in that pond's ecosystem. I feast on that particular fish. However, two birds can exist in a particular niche, in a particular ecosystem, if their niches are different. So, for example, if this bird says, you know what, I am going to eat vegetation. Okay. And this bird says, I am going to continue eating the fishes. They can very well coexist in that particular pond. Why? Because they are not competing for the resources. Their niche is different. The role that they play in that particular water body is different. Okay. So, which is why no two species within the same habitat, within the same address that they have, they cannot have the same niche. They cannot play the same role. If they play the same role, eventually competition develops, survival of the fittest, Darwinism comes into action. Clear? <clears throat> this was asked by the way. Okay. Go ahead and answer this for me also. As always, question based understanding is going to be my complete focus. Okay. So, tides, gravitational force, salinity, predator, prey relationship and light. Which of the above are abiotic factors? The non-living factors, you will let me know in the answer box, the comment box, okay. A and B were in the previous uh, uh, slide, this is C, alright. Look at D now, nitrogen, temperature, snow, frost and light, which of the above are limiting factors for terrestrial autotrophs, terrestrial land-based autotrophs which create their own food, make their own food. Autotrophs, you know, are not just animals. Not just plants, in fact. You have bacteria also. And what's the third one? I had given you the answer. What was the third one? Autotrophs includes not just plants, but bacteria. And what's the third one? You will let me know in the answer chat, in the chat box. Okay. And arrange it in the descending manner. So, come from the largest to the smallest. Just go ahead. Do this. Revision karo. 
Okay. Once you have understood something, go ahead and revise it. So go ahead and arrange this in descending order from me, from the largest to the smallest unit of area. Finally, question F, limiting factors are mostly abiotic. Okay. Did I tell you about uh, limiting uh, factors being, uh, okay, I didn't. Let's do that then. Okay. So these limiting factors that we discussed, no guys, you missed this. We should have done this. Okay. So limiting factors that I told you, like I told you, first is obviously the constraints that are there. Constraints can be obviously both biotic and abiotic. Mostly though we know that it is abiotic. Okay. For example, the sunlight, the lack of sunlight, the lack of uh, rainfall, the lack of or going up high altitude, all of these are the abiotic limiting factors. The biotic limiting factors are what? Again, competition. You know, this competition between species, it can reduce the population. Can it not reduce the population? So it becomes a, a, a limiting factor. Okay. You are looking at predator-prey predator relationships. Okay. Where uh, they suppose a predator goes and eats a particular prey, that also becomes a limiting factor. Again, it's to do with the living realm, so it's a biotic limiting factor. Clear? So, but mostly it is abiotic. These are the only two cases in which you have biotic limiting factors, which is life-based limiting factors, which is life-based factors that affect the population or reduce or keep in control the population of a particular species. Clear? Negative interaction. Correct, Karuna. Yehi hai. That's what limiting factors are, the ne negative interaction. Uh, Abhiraj, uh, nahi, kal, kal nahi hua tha, isli hum aaj kar rahe hai. Thik hai? Aaj kar rahe hum. Mein, uh, mein baaki sare update apne telegram channel pe aapko dal dunga, aane wale classes ke. Thik hai? Iska bhi aap mujhe answer batayenge vaise. Density dependent limiting factors and density independent limiting factors. What would what what am I hinting at here when I am writing about density dependent and density independent? Think for a moment. Limiting factors that affect density, which means affect the population, and limiting factors that the population is independent from, such as natural hazards, pollutions, etc. Okay, go ahead and answer this for me also. Simple common sense lagayenge aap. Alright, so before I go forward, this is on the 11th, starting on the 11th of August, morning batch. And uh, treat this as a sort of demo class as to how we go ahead and understanding topics. You see, I am not going to go and read books. Okay, reading books is, I am not good at reading. I am going to explain to you topics in a manner in which you will understand, in which you will be able to recall. And then follow it up with questions so as to complete your understanding. Okay. Once you have done a substantial part of the syllabus, we'll also start answer writing. Right now, the focus is going to be on complete understanding of the basic concepts, so as to make sense of the policy perspective that we will do later. Okay. So this is uh, like a demo class of how I do. Obviously, we'll do this entire series. But if you want to go ahead and obtain this for say every other subject, well, this is the right place to be at. Go ahead on studyiq.com. You'll find the link in the description box. Use the code BA Live. And uh, we'll, we'll see you on the 11th. That will be a good uh, say, decision on your part, you know. It's just going to really help you. Okay. So now that we have done niche, we have done the basics. Correct. Anything that constrains a population size and slows or stops. Correct, Lekha. Your interpretation is absolutely correct. Okay. Now let's quickly understand two very key concepts, guys. Okay. One is energy transfer. Okay. In an ecosystem, how is energy transferred? Okay. Pay attention for 10 minutes and it is extremely easy for you to grasp. Okay. So you have the sunlight. Right. Now you know that a tree goes ahead and makes its own food. Okay. That it is able to use the sunlight to create its own food for itself. So right now, you, I told you that those organisms that can go ahead and create their own food are called as what? Autotrophs. Or you can say, in this case, the primary producer of food. Right? So a tree or a grass is my primary producer. That it is creating food by itself. But how is it creating food? So very generalized oversimplification I am going to give you so that it helps your understanding. Okay? 
let's look at the generalized oversimplification now. So you know that our atmosphere has carbon dioxide. All right. So you have say all of these carbon uh, molecules and alongside them you have say two oxygens. All right. So you have these two oxygens with each carbon dioxide. What happens exactly? The tree is able to use this carbon dioxide that is there in the atmosphere in a manner. In fact, the correct term is that it is able to fix it. Okay. In fact, the correct term is fixing of carbon dioxide. So the tree goes ahead, fixes these carbon dioxide and then basically goes ahead and creates its own carbon bond in its own particular tree. That you know how the mat, how the carbon has changed form, the bonds there have been broken. Yes. So whenever you have these bonds being created, a creation of bond and a breaking of bond. So when a bond gets broken, heat is released, energy is released. Right. So straight away you see that the tree goes ahead and creates its own particular version of carbon dioxide within its own biomass. Okay. Now you have say the particular rabbit that goes ahead and eats this particular grass or that tree or the leaf or whatever you are uh, considering it to be. Okay. So now this tree, this particular carbon bond that I am seeing here, this organic compound that has formed, okay, the same carbon bonds are formed in the uh, rabbit's body also. He uses part of it for respiration, part of it for his daily say uh, movement for his growth, for reproduction and part of it he goes ahead and defecates it out. All right. Now thereafter you have a fox who wants to eat this particular rabbit. Similarly, this particular carbon bonds that were formed here within the biomass of the particular rabbit, all right, you find that this has now transferred to this particular fox. Eventually in this process, you see how this is a unidirectional process this flow of energy happening, that energy that is being, that is essentially coming from the carbon uh, dioxide. Yes, obviously, host of say other uh, mechanisms are in place, but it is a gross oversimplification for your understanding that I am telling you. This unidirectional flow of energy happening within an ecosystem that started from the tree, okay, that energy went to the uh, rabbit. Now, the rabbit is eaten by the fox. So, every time this jump happens, you find that this is a in, very inefficient process in fact. Yes, the efficiency is only 10 to 11 percent. Right. So, what, what's, what do I mean by 10 to 11 percent? So, if this, if suppose 100 energy was formed here, eventually some of it is used by the tree also because obviously it is a living organism. So, it is going to use that for its own sustenance. After the rabbit eats it, you are going to find that whatever it has consumed, Say if it has consumed 10 of it, just the 10 percent of that it is available for it. So, it is just getting one of it. Eventually, one unit of that energy is getting to the rabbit. This is how inefficient the process is. Eventually, if that fox now is eaten by say a hunter, okay. So, this guy, this dude here, he becomes my apex predator. Again, if, if there is no cannibalism in the society, if there is no human eating human, then this guy becomes my apex predator. So, straight away you understand primary producers number one, primary consumers, the ones who are having the food made by the primary producers, this becomes my secondary consumer, all right, and this becomes my tertiary consumer. Clear? Now, autotrophs, the name tells you that those who can make their own food. In this diagram, only the tree and the grass can make their own food. There is no bacteria there, there is no algae there, which means that you are looking at these three entities being called heterotrophs, which means they need to rely on someone else for their food. Correct, Pratik. Unidirectional flow and 10 percent only passes. Eventually, it is a very inefficient process. Okay? So, you have to understand this. The examination, how it is going to ask, you know. You understood the whole concept. 
now the examination perspective that energy flow that starts from the tree the breaking of the carbon dioxide bonds becoming biomolecules within the tree system getting eaten by the rabbit that fox eating the rabbit then the hunter eating the fox this energy flow is unidirectional and very very inefficient okay it's not at all efficient in fact all right so this is how energy flows in an ecosystem how does and eventually what happens all of this fox this small bunny here they are going to eventually die no eventually you are also going to have the tree that will die the the hunter who will die they are going to the decomposers decomposers is a favorite topic of uh, upsc by the way several questions over the years okay the term that is used for them is detritivores detritivores okay the decomposers we'll look at that also what question was asked by the upsc so these decomposers what they do eventually all of this energy because you know by now that uh, energy is never lost it just changes form and shape eventually all of this energy goes into the decomposers who will break down these carbon uh, bonds that i told you into simpler inorganic molecules okay and these are the molecules that are again used by the tree in presence of sunlight and water and and say soil to again go ahead and make the process of photosynthesis right lekam a uh, food chain is different food chain is the next higher level of what i am discussing here this is exactly what i am discussing here is a trophic level okay trophic level is essentially trophic is to do with food okay but we are discussing the organizational level of each particular say uh, uh, division say the consumer the producer the decomposer after this is established after say how energy flows in an ecosystem and next how matter flows in an ecosystem then the comes the question of food chain then the relationships between the stakeholders all commensalism and mutualism all of those lisms that there are several of them we'll discuss that in the next class that is lecture 3 samajh rahe ho so all of these decomposers finally are the ones that go ahead and recycle the particular carbon bonds break down into simpler inorganic molecules that are again used by the trees and this process begins again so this one he is giving out carbon dioxide which is here the oxygen that is released by the tree used by this so you see how everything is now adding up it becomes like a huge web that is exactly how energy flows into an particular ecosystem or a particular body clear all right let's look at this question guys again i told you the dead tree tree wars upsc loves loves this particular topic the decomposers okay common sense lagao which of the above are dead tree tree wars virus fungi or bacteria okay is virus a, a, a decomposer think of that virus makes you fall sick does it decompose anything yes or no okay so again a upsc previous year question also look at this question question h this is g by the way all right question h energy flow from primary producers to subsequent levels is unidirectional autotrophs comprise plants bacteria and algae identify the incorrect statements and finally this question which of the following are detritivores okay see how many times they have asked see how many times they have asked about decomposers guys which is why i'm telling you the basic concepts are key and when these questions get asked anyone who's not focused enough on the basics is going to be like ye kahan se pooch diya yaar ye to hai nahi is phalana kitab mein us kitab mein but the thing is it's it's basic understanding that you have to just understand who are the detritivores the decomposers are is there any particular type of fish that is a detritivore go ahead and answer this for me okay this is again previous year question only pyq hai ye pura ka pura क्लियर ठीक है अभिराज अभिराज एंड रियान आई अप्रिशिएट द आंसर्स गुड गाइस व्हाट आई विल सजेस्ट इज आप सारे सवाल ना एक ऐसे कमेंट बॉक्स में डाल देना मेरे लिए ओके डू दैट फॉर मी प्लीज ओके पुट इट इन वन प्लेस सो दैट इज इजियर फॉर मी टू कोलेट आल्सो ऑल राइट सो दैट इज द फर्स्ट क्लास ओवर वी डिस्कस्ड द बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट ओनली वी हैव नॉट इवन गॉटन स्टार्टेड विद द सिलेबस नेक्स्ट क्लास वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू डू इज टेक अ लुक एट इकोलॉजिकल सक्सेशन 
we'll take a look at homeostasis. Okay, we will also understand, uh, say, the basic ecological relationships, the lisms that I told you, even uh, mutualism, commensalism, all of that. Okay, and uh, more of such questions. Most of it you will understand is picked from the basics. UPSC loves basics when it comes to environment, uh, forest, and climate change. All right. So again, uh, make sure that you are on my Telegram channel. This is where the update of the next class comes. Okay, it will be another intensive 45 to 50 minute session. We'll take a look at selected topics, but focus on understanding and question solving. All right. Smita, I will take a look. Thanks for reminding. Can you just drop me an email, please, so that it comes up on my inbox. Just follow it. Usi mein aap reply karke mujhe hi karke bhej do. Yeah, kuch bhi bhej do. Okay, so that it comes up in my inbox because there are quite a lot. All right, I'll be happy to have a look at it ASAP. Okay, guys, I shall see you. Make sure that you're on my Instagram channel also and my Telegram channel so that you can join me for the next class. Okay? And I hope uh, you will also join me tomorrow morning 8 a.m. for the daily news analysis. Uh, we'll take a look at another bunch of very important topics. Okay? Uh, one that, uh, in fact, I was just thinking of today. We'll take a look. It's now is not the time anyways. Okay? Okay, have a good night. See you tomorrow morning 8 a.m. Bye.